Thank you for joining us for this masterclass on generating leads for your business. We are joined today by the CEO of Predict, Alex Oliveira, as he will walk you through proven strategies for attracting more leads while converting those leads into new customers. In today's webinar, we're going to be discussing lead generation, success for your business. Every business needs leads. Okay, so we're going to start with you learning more about your prospects. What is a marketing persona? So the marketing persona is basically your target audience is who, what, when, where, and why. In addition to understanding general demographic information and interests and behaviors such as gender, job title, job function, and so on and so forth. So this is really important. So before you think about generating leads, I want you to think about how well you know your prospects, how well you know your customers, and then assign marketing personas for each of those groups. This is gonna be important for you to be able to customize your lead generation campaigns. And the customer journey starts and expands online. We know that. So the, the, the question you have to ask yourself is, are you there? Do you currently generate leads? When someone goes to Google or Bing or Facebook and they search for a business in your area or near me, whatever that industry is, are you coming up? Because if you're not generating leads that way, then you are leaving uh, it to the competition and you wanna grow. A business needs to grow to be sustainable. Now, why is digital marketing so hard? Well, it's so hard because if you look at this uh, a transit map that was created by Gartner, there are so many channels, right? If we go from the top left around, you've got search engines, you've got the creative, the UX, the commerce, social analytics, the list goes on. There are literally hundreds of channels and it's very complicated for the average small business owner to have enough time in a day or money in, in their budget to be able to attack all of these channels. So what we try to do is show you what works. You can't compete with the Fortune 500 competitors who have the funds to be able to invest money and time into every one of these channels. So it doesn't have to be this hard. But let's be honest, 89% of consumers say they have switched to a business, to a competitor due to poor customer experience. And that customer experience that they're talking about in this particular survey comes from online. So it's really important that your, your presence across the web, specifically your website, is up to date. Because if even if someone finds you, if the customer ex experience is poor because the website doesn't load fast enough or you don't have enough content, then you can't blame whoever is doing uh, your sales on not you know, closing more sales, right? Because if they get a lead and the lead doesn't have enough information, this just makes it hard, harder for you to generate more business. So think about the customer experience from the moment they see your, your brand products or services online, on the web, on social media, wherever they see it. Think about that whole experience. And as they go down that path of the customer journey, how are they being served? And, and have your customers changed their habits? This is important. Since COVID, we know supply chain issues, behaviors, the economy, lots of things have changed, right? But everyone's still holding a smartphone and ready to make purchasing decisions. The opportunities for you are the fact that now you can really hire just about anyone for any position to work from home. Online demand has skyrocketed. So if you are currently not serving your clients um, through through your own website or portal, taking payments, doing Zoom calls, uh, webinars like the one we're doing here today, and just making it more, making it easier and being more flexible on how you engage with your customers. If you're not taking on those opportunities, you are leaving money on the table. So the system I will present to you today is a system that I've used for more than 12 years to generate more than 24 million leads for brands like Ford, Allstate, and more than 3,000 small to medium businesses. The system works. Obviously, it's always changing with technology, but when I created the system, it used to have about five steps. Today, we have about seven steps. So it's take a look at first at the brand, then we get down to your audience, 
the purpose, why you're doing what you're doing, like what are the outcomes you're looking for. Obviously, planning is super important. Number five, we go to the campaign, like what do we do to build that campaign? Set up met metrics, right? The, the analytics is number six. And then we go to optimize. Once you have ran a campaign and you come back, how do you optimize? That's how we're going to talk about lead generation today. This is called the Lead Gen 360 system. So branding. Branding is establishing an image of your company in your customer's eyes. It's not your logo. It's not your colors. Those are just your brand guides, right? And what you want to do is help customers understand what you offer and how you're unique by establishing your brand. What does your brand stand for? I mean, think about Disney. You know, whether you're a big Disney fan or not, you have to admit that the way they have all their different products out in the market, right? From parks to studios to merchandise, it it really paints that picture of magic and fun and happiness. So what I want you to do is tell your company's story in a compelling way by answering your why. Why are you in business? Okay. And so the exercise for this section is what makes your brand stand out? I want you to just pause here and use this very simple formula. You're going to fill in where you see the bracket. So we offer whatever your product or service is for the target market that you're talking about. Let's say it's women. Let's say I was saying we offer um, uh, cosmetics for women and then two, you're going to add the value proposition. So two, um, make them feel great um, or healthy. So that would be a fill in the blank there. So you fill in those three blanks and then unlike the alternative, we, you add the key differentiator. So I would say like, unlike L'Oreal, we, you know, take care of customers in, in such and such way. So there's lots of obviously different ways we can do this. I just wanted to give a little example, but do this exercise. And that's sort of like where you begin with your, your, you know, trying to figure out how your brand can stand out from the competition. The next thing I'd like for you to do is test your website load sp speed. As I was mentioning, even if you're generating leads, if the customer experience is poor on your website, you're not going to generate sales. So use this tool, which is at pagespeed.web.dev and test the, sp the speed of your website. And it's going to, Google is going to give you this free uh, report and you can get with your web developer and improve upon these. I guarantee you that your conversion and your sales will go up. All right. Number two, audience. Finding your target audience has never been easier online, right? Well, not really. It's noisier now, right? If you look at the number of videos, the number of creators that are online, it sort of sometimes can make it actually harder. So harder to find a customer. There are definitely more options for customers. But you want to learn how to reach your target audience by creating user personas. This is going to help you successfully identify and target your ideal customers. So in looking at these three examples here, I, th I have Mike, who is a techie, 24 to 35, uh, 25 to 34 years old. I have Zoe, a socialite, 18 to 33. And then Jeff, uh, he's cost conscious, 35 to 49. So again, whether you do it by generations, you do it by age, you know, uh, region, however you want to do it by positions, maybe you're targeting managers versus entry level people, create those personas, give them names. Um, you, you don't limit it to, to three. You may have, you know, 20, 30 different personas for different people that you're selling to, right? Maybe you're selling to small businesses, to enterprise, maybe you're selling to um, parents, but, but the parents are making the decision, but it's the kid who comes into your, your funnel. So you got to think that way. And then use something like talk, T-A-W-K dot two, and add chat to your website. So easy. I know most people will say, well, I don't have enough traffic. You never know. You may generate an extra three, four, five leads or sales just by be giving your customer the opportunity to talk to someone in real time. So chat is important. Exercise too. I'd like for you to use some of these tools. Definitely. They're going to help you create and find your audience. The cbb.census.gov tool is amazing. Then of course, ads.google.com you set up a free account and use the keyword planner so that you can find out uh the different audiences of course business.facebook.com and then linkedin those are really the top four free tools that you can use and then there's a bunch more um under here that you can test out with i really like think with google and trends um.google.com 
but there's no shortage of tools to help you better find your audience. Okay. And then do competitive research. I love, 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 love this tool here. Facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash library. It's a free tool. It'll tell you what your competitors are spending, how much they're spending, when they launched ads, what kind of ads they launched. So it'll give you an idea of what kind of marketing they're doing. And then do competitive research, paid search ads. Even if you're not going to run paid search ads, you can use a tool like Google's uh, the, at the ads tool, or you can use semrush.com. I have the URL at the bottom here. But find out what is the cost of certain keywords. Perhaps you're not even using the right keywords in your campaigns. So this is really important to find that target audience. All right, number three, purpose. Setting your goals for your online lead generation campaign is super, super important, right? Without a purpose, it won't work. So what I'd like, like for you to do is use the SMART system to create goals and define the purpose of your campaigns. I do this for every campaign and it works really well. Every campaign that I set up, I, I look at the what what is specific about it, right? The goal, it should be a, a very, very specific with the end in mind. What outcomes am I looking for? Then is it measurable? Is it achievable? Is is it relevant and is it time-based? I need to be able to answer those questions before I invest time and money into a campaign. Use the SMART system. So we're looking here at a Facebook, a typical campaign when you choose the different objectives, you see right to the, the left, you've got awareness, which is at the top, top, top of the funnel. You see it in the um, graphic here on the left. And then in the middle column, you've got consideration, traffic, engagement, lead generation. And then the last column there is conversion. Conversion is when a user actually comes into your website or gives you a call, right? So that, that takes you to the top part of this funnel that you see, awareness, consideration, conversion. What you wanna do is create a lead generation campaign that goes beyond that. You think about retention, loyalty, and then advocacy. So exercise three, really wants you to think about what your objectives are. What are your marketing and lead generation objectives? Is it to increase your voice of customer? Perhaps you don't have great reviews, you wanna add more reviews. Is it to create awareness? Is it to increase product demand, generate more leads, increase the lifetime value, boost sales? There are hundreds of, of different objectives that I can come up with for my business before I spend any dollars on doing a marketing campaign. So really think about that. Number four, planning, creating the team, Budget time for your campaigns is so important, right? So I like to use this little acronym here. We call it TBT, the time to budget. So learn why every successful marketing campaign should be executed by a solid team. And then you need to stick to an allotted and realistic budget. And then more importantly, it needs to be based on a specific time schedule. If you fail to do these three, I guarantee you, you're going to have problems with your marketing campaign. So exercise four is I want you to think about your, who is executing your marketing campaign. Might be two, three, four, five people. You have, Obviously, you can add people you've outsourced to. You may be one of those people. The budget, how much are you going to be allocating for the campaign? And then what is the duration of your campaign? A campaign isn't a month, right? A campaign is something that you could do over the course of three, six, nine, 12 months with different benchmarks and key performing indicators. So don't, don't just try to throw something at the wall. You'll be wasting your money. Number five, the campaign. Let's explore the best performing types of digital ad campaigns today. Let, well, first, let's learn to create the copy, the visuals, and your call to action. When you're looking at a typical ad online, this is the anatomy of it, right? You have the big idea, which is the text at the top. You've got the creative vibe, which is the image, or it might be a video or carousel images, depending on what platform you're on. Then you've got the headline, short and sweet, right? Right to the, you, you want to be brief and to the point. And then you've got the link de description. And then more, most importantly is that call to action, that little button that you see on the right at the bottom. Super important, right? Is it call us today, get a quote, shop now. There's so many different buttons that you can add to there. But it's really important to know the anatomy of doing an ad online. And so these are some of the, the channels that you're going to look at, right? Search engine optimization, which is SEO, blogs, webinars, 
just like the one we're doing here, podcasts, case studies, videos, newsletters, eBooks, social media, guides, FAQs, user-generated content. There are so many channels for you to use online. I'm just naming some of the most obvious ones here. And I don't have the expectation that a, a small business owner or solopreneur is going to be able to attack all of these. Obviously, it takes time and money. So you have to choose a few different channels and, and create your campaigns there. So what's your offer? So important. What is your offer? What what are you offering of value? In, in, and then you have to take that into a landing page, not a full website, a landing page. Landing page doesn't have buttons. Landing page is like a flyer, right? It has a specific goal in mind. And this is the anatomy of landing page. So I want you to pause here and go through all numbers one through 10 so that you make sure that you have landing pages for each product that you sell. Each product, each service should have a landing page. And every landing page should either have your, your shopping cart item, right? Your product where people can add to cart or if you are a service provider, it should have your form. Form typically on the right. Obviously, if it's on mobile, it's just going to appear in the middle. But you're going to have a form with a call to action. And let's be honest, the less fields that you collect, like here's a short form, email, first name, last name, company. Obviously, I'd want to collect the phone number as well. Um, and the call to action here is get a quote. I would obviously have a different headline there, not the call to action. But these are some of the things that I want to put into a landing page. I want to add, uh, you know, some some text so that you know what the the offer is about. I want some visuals, so usually one image or a video. Videos don't tend to work very well, but you could try. The color of the of the call to action button is important: orange, green, or blue. Those are the best colors. Definitely orange, though. And then no social media links. So if you're going to add social media links, do it all the way at the bottom of the landing page, and then make sure you have all these bullet points these are things that you should have in place they're more compliance driven that will also increase your customers experience right like you should have terms of terms of use privacy policy the load speed should be good and you should have an ssl certificate of, among some of these other uh, elements here so test your subject lines, right? If you're doing a campaign on social uh, for email marketing, like a newsletter, test your subject line. This one here, omnisend.com forward slash subject line tester is amazing. It's going to give you an idea of what works and what doesn't. The second thing you're going to do when you're creating your email campaign is make sure that you can automate some of that. All the different email service providers give you the opportunity to automate uh, the, the each step of that customer journey. Right. And what that's going to do is going to help you save time and it's going to increase the customer uh, experience as well. So here's another uh, landing page example I wanted to share with you. And I'd like for you to do that as your exercise here for number five is optimize your landing page. Right. Go through it, test out the form and see how you like it. Okay, number six, measuring. This is all about analytics and data. This is the secret to your success. So please don't skip this, this step. And you may want to hire out for this. So you might want to use, let's say, Upwork or LinkedIn Professional, or just ask around and, and really try to find someone that can help you discover the different features that exist in Google Analytics and Facebook Insights. This is going to give you just so much rich data about your digital footprint. You know, you want to find out what's your top performing digital channels. How many people come to your website every day? How many are bouncing? How long are they staying on? Which pages are they coming to? Is it converting? And, it, and if so, at what rate? There are so many questions that you can answer. Um, I liken the analytics to your online presence. So your website, your email, your social media, whatnot. I compare that to your financial statements in business, right? You really want to know your P&L. You want to know your income statement, your profit and loss. Same thing here. You don't have to be a marketer to, to know these things and you can set them up automatically so that you get these notifications on a daily basis. So exercise six, I'd like for you, you to look at your KPIs. Um, and then see if they are tied to your marketing objectives, right? And here are some of the questions. How many users uh, visit your website every day? You should know this number. Not every day, but just about every week. 
What are your top keywords? What's your top performing content? Which users convert to leads? Are you tracking phone calls? If so, are, are you asking which sources they're coming from? And then what's your CPA, the cost per acquisition of each lead? And more importantly, what's your return on marketing spend? And the last one here is number seven, optimize. I want you to determine what's working and what's not. And then you test and test again, right? So you would know this information from your analytics. Understanding how to properly analyze your campaigns and measure success by focusing on profitability. Learn why performing A-B tests can give you the most invaluable insights into what should be optimized. So exercise seven, love for you to try creating a campaign on Google Optimize. That's part of their marketing software. It's free and you can create a B test. So let's say you do a campaign, one on Facebook and one on Google and both, all, both of those campaigns, you could set up two campaigns, A and B. So in this case, you only have to create one campaign. That means one headline, one call to action, one description, one image. So it's just one campaign. And then you go to Google and you set up two of those with different calls to actions and different offers. And then you do the same with Facebook. And then you set a budget and you allow Google Optimize to tell you which one performed better, but you're just pulling everything into one place. So ultimately, the purpose of this webinar was to help you reach more customers, improve customer journey, elevate customer experience, and generate more leads. The key takeaways I'd like for you to walk away with in today's webinar is that you would need to create a compelling story for your brand and your company. You really need to know your target audience. Be clear on your objectives, your marketing objectives, your sales objectives, and your customers' objectives and understand your customers. Are you giving them the best experience possible? And then decide where you wanna promote. Number six, create an irresistible offer. It has to be an offer that is compelling enough for them to take action. Number seven, learn what tools to use. We shared so many tools on this webinar today. Number eight, optimize your website and landing pages. Number nine, decide your budget, your time, and your team. So the timeline and the team, we talked about this at the beginning and then measure your results. Thanks for joining us. And we hope you learned some valuable skills for lead generation. Make sure to check out predict.io for more webinars on marketing, lead generation, podcasting, and the latest tools in business technology. Thank you. And we hope you join us again soon.